And that brings us to our last person of the evening, uh, President. Rich, you want to say a few words? No, okay. Um, very rarely have I been accused of being a mic. Um, and I promise I'll say a few words. Uh, I've been, uh, my name's Rich Sachi, um, on the forums and on various other places, but also on this big kid. Um, so sometimes I'm happy to have uh, I have been, I did my first mountain bike race in 1990. Um, and it was on a game trail, and uh, a couple of them there in that spring of 1990 were in actual gun range. And I distinctly remember riding our bikes through the woods and the guns just going off next to us, wondering if we were going to get shot. Um, since that time, I've seen it grow from literally riding on game trails to riding on groomed trails exclusively for mountain biking. I've been fortunate to travel across the country. I've ridden and raced in over 18 states, uh, and I've seen our sport grow from grassroots almost as professional and international. The thing about our sport that we tend to forget, even as leaders, is that the sport was born out of a state of irreverence for the rigid structure of the road. It was almost thumbing our nose at what the guys on the road bikes did to, hey, we can do this and we can have fun doing it. And I often ask sometimes when I show up to a race, and I'm not necessarily in a team kid, but I'm in something a little bit more fun and flamboyant. Um, and that's to remember that we're there to have fun. We're almost making fun of ourselves as a sport as it develops because we are trying to push the boundaries. It's everything from, I remember riding rigid brakes with cantilever brakes. You know, there were two by seven speeds, and now we're talking about three by nines on 29 inch wheels with hydraulic brakes. The sport continues to grow and change, and we have to have an organization that does that. We're at the point now as Dorm. We're 1,200 members. We've never been 1,200. We're 20 plus trail bands. Some of our trails are being threatened with land access issues. And as Dorval, we have to do things differently. We've got a membership that wants to know what's happening quickly, how much we're spending on things, and they want to know what happened. We've got to get that information out there for these members to see so they can give them the back and have to have a response. Have to be willing We've got trails that are being threatened by uh, encroaching growth issues in the suburbs. And we're, we're actually fighting people for land access out there. We can't do things the same way. We have to think strategically about our organization. We're literally at 1,000 and 1,200 members, 20 plus trailheads, and the most miles of any trip of any organization in Texas. We're the largest mountain bike club in Texas, possibly in the country. We cannot do things 12 month in 12 month increments anymore. We have to think ahead. We have to have strategic plans that think two, three, and four years in the future. We can't convince every year and expect the board to recreate the wheel, go, oh, we're going to do things differently. As a board and as a club, we have to create a system, much like the trails, that are sustainable. Whether it's financial, whether it's secretarial, we have to have things that we can pass on train those leaders to go forward. Rick mentioned we are just a bike club. I'm going to go ahead and one more and say we're a bike club on steroids. We've got rides, we've got cookouts, we have social organizations, we have racing that is the lifeblood, the financial lifeblood for the organization. We've got advocacy issues that we have only begun to scratch the surface of, in which to go and pursue grants and funding to sustain these trails that we have to go forward and do. As an organization, we've got to pursue those efforts. So my role here is to step in to what Bill has brought us to, go forward to the next level beyond that, and start thinking about not just 12 months, not just 2009, but how can this board, with this club, look at what we're going to do when we become 2,000 members? Because we can't continue to do the same things and expect to improve the results. Albert Einstein said that was the definition of insanity, doing things the same way and expecting to improve the results. I don't know a single member that wants this club to not get better at doing something. If we want to get better at doing things, we have to be willing to accept change to do that. We saw that happen with the race years. There, everybody always talked about our, our involvement in membership. Well, right around race years, we go from 600 to 800 members. We went to 1,200. Somebody out there in our community saw something with the membership that is changing what's happening. And where we got to at this point is great. We are in a wonderful position. 
from a launching pad to go to that next step and level. I think with the board and the people that are nominated, any combination of that group to work together as a team and be responsive, be active, and be decisive. I think that's what you need to expect from the board. I think that's what you need to expect from the leadership and the vision going forward. So that's my spiel, and I would really appreciate you both.